Hi, this is Pavel and this is part 3 of our C Sharp Windows Forms exercise. So far we loaded the arrays and text files and we are able to display the information. So if I demonstrate what we did so far, we have our form. When I click load arrays, the form loads the text file, which is the first three list boxes. And it calculates the, you calculate the rate based on the discount code. Uh, letter F has associated rate of 0 0.05, for example, and it displays all the information in our list boxes. We made it so only up to 10 uh, are uh, possible to load. If the form is already, uh, if the array is already loaded, if I click load arrays again, we get a array size exceeded, array size has been exceeded uh, error. So in other words, uh, it, it informs us, but it still loads uh up to 10 elements so uh in other words it doubles it it, it loads the first uh few elements that uh, still fit uh, to the to the size of 10. so for us to uh, kind of eliminate that we need to uh well let me exit the form if i can we have to go uh after we dis before we display arrays, uh, we need to clear. Well, not not really clear, but uh, we will once the button is clicked and the arrays are loaded. The easiest way to eliminate any any more like double loading, rather than displaying the message that the array size was exceeded, which is good, but. Uh, the easiest way to prevent user from clicking it again is to making sure the, the user cannot click it again. So we will disable the button, basically. That's what I'm going to be doing. So the button load arrays dot enabled equals false. All right, well, actually, I'll put it after we display the arrays. Doesn't matter, it will still display it, but I guess it's a better chronological order. So if I start now, and uh, I click load arrays, all the files are, I mean, the file is loaded, and I cannot click it again because the load arrays is being disabled. Okay, so we have that. Now the next thing that we can do is go into our form and start working on these buttons. So let's do the exit. The exit didn't work because, well, I didn't put any code on it. So, uh, so let's do the this that close. So when the exit button is clicked, it will close the whole project, the whole uh, the form. So that was easy. So let's come back over here and do the sort by ID and sort by name. So sort by ID is first and uh, just like we did before, uh, we have our number of customers. So um, we need to make sure that the user is not allowed to uh, sort anything until the arrays, the load arrays are being loaded. We could, there's several things you can do uh, Remember, we just disabled the button once the arrays are clicked. So we can check, is the button disabled? If it is, then we know the arrays uh, have been loaded. But uh, another way to do it is, is simply, we already calculated the number of customers based on uh, as we were loading the arrays. So we can simply reuse that. We can do our an if statement that simply says, if our number of customers is greater than zero, then we can perform sorting. Perform sorting only if uh, arrays were loaded. And we know uh, number of customers is initialized to zero at the beginning, and it stays that way uh, until the arrays are being loaded. Uh, it's been incrementally uh, increased as the each uh, the of the line is being read or each customer from the file is being read. 
So if it's greater than zero, we know it's been, uh, the array is well loaded. But again, there's other ways to do this. Uh, it's an easy check. So um, now we can we need to compare the IDs. We are sorting by IDs. So we need we have two IDs to compare. Uh, so we need to do uh, we need to do some loop in here. So we will do a for loop, our outer loop, because uh, then there's gonna be also inner loop. Uh, so integer i equals zero. I is less than number of customers, but not uh, not all the way. Only number of customers minus one. In other words, this is gonna be uh, we are comparing two elements, minus one, and then the next one to it. So uh, this is the outer loop that runs, and now we we are going to check for the other customer that is being that is going to be compared with this one. So we will do our for loop again, uh, integer c equals, and we are comparing the next one. So we will do i plus one. All right c is greater than number of customers we need to go not minus one because in this case we go all the way to the last one this one we are comparing the one before the last with the one that is the last that's why we have the minus one there otherwise we would we would go all the way to the end and then we would come over here and we would try to add plus one and we would exceed the bounds of the array that's why we have to have minus one here because uh, otherwise we would be comparing a um, customer that doesn't exist that is not in the array and c plus plus and in this case if uh, we, we compare the id so this is an integer so it's simple if our id of c is less remember c is the next ID. So if the next ID is less than the one before that, then we swap them because we want to order them uh, in ascending order. So if the C is less than ID of I, then we'll swap them. And I will, we could swap them right here. We could do the swap logic here. But remember, we, ha we are going to also be sorting by name. So instead of doing the same thing twice, I will create a, a function called swap array values and I will I will pass the uh, I and C into it and you'll see how it works uh, uh, in a minute it simply will be swapping uh, the indexes of the customer with I uh, index and the customer of the C index all right, and um, so this is a for loop, and uh, once they are sorted, once sorted, display sorted info in list boxes. So we will do, we will call the display arrays function. All right, so uh, that's our first thing. I'm going to copy paste this because this is going to be very similar up, all the way here to our sort by name. Actually, you know what? Uh, since uh, we have the if statement, let's do the else as well. Uh, we will do else because I mean it won't it won't do anything, but the user won't won't know why is he clicking the button and nothing is happening. So, and the else statement will be will display a message box that show a message call and we can say arrays were not loaded yet so if the user tries to click the button let me show you if the user tries to click the sort ID button before the arrays are loaded the user will get a message saying that the arrays were not loaded yet so now I'm gonna copy the whole thing and I'll paste it into my sort by name. Uh, 
so it's sort ID and the sort by name again it's going to be very similar uh, except the we will be swapping not the ID array but the name array and we are comparing string so uh, instead of the if statement like this this is gonna this is the uh, thing that will be different we will do comparison of strings so string dot compare and we are comparing name this is the array of C with the name that's the name array uh, but with the index of I so if this is less than zero then we will swap the values now the, the way this works is uh, I'll, I'll just comment it out compares to strings if returned value is less than zero then first string precedes the second one that's why we have the in other words the C which is the next string if this is less than this string then we will swap them all right so uh, that's all there is to it that's why we are com checking whether this string dot compare is less than zero because if it is then this string precedes this strings but in uh, the way they are ordered this would be the one after that it's, that's why if this is true we will swap them okay so um, we have that now we let's do we have the else message as well so we can do the uh, swap array values uh, function so I'm going to come over here and I will do another void function called swap array values and uh, remember we are passing the indexes and we have to just pass the indexes because all the arrays will have to be uh, moved if this if uh, we are swapping one we have to swap all of them otherwise the the information would not be corresponding with the correct array uh, the values would be off so uh, we are passing the integer i and we are passing the integer uh, c there and so now we can swap the values in all arrays so they remain parallel because these are all parallel arrays they have to be in sync so how do we swap them well we need to create an in uh, a temporary index i'll call it temp id and uh, it will hold the let's say the i index all right so um now we can do the uh another uh, element called string temp name they all have to be temporary we have id we have the name we have the code and rate so we have since we are swapping all of them we have to create a temporary value for all of them so uh, it's gonna be the name of i and that's the i that we are passing here right so uh, in, that's the i we passing into a function so string temp code equals code i and decimal because our rate is decimal so temp temp rate equals rate of i okay so these are our temporary values and now we can start actually uh, swapping them so we do the id of i this is our uh, remember this is our array so we will pass the id of c to it we will do the same with name name i equals name c code i equals code c and uh, oh, this is not a capital that's our code now rate 
i equals rate c all right and now we need to put the values from uh, from uh, i into the c we put the c's into i now we put c's into the i's no i'm sorry we put the c's into i's and now we need to put i's into our c's that's why we have the temporary values because they hold th this is now overwritten but we, we captured those values over here into our temporary variables so our id of c now equals temp id whatever the value there was that's what we we are passing to it name c equals name oops temp name sorry temp name our code c equals temp code and our rate c equals uh temp rate all right so uh, here we capture the values of the index of i and then we override the uh, i values with the ones that are in c so that's why we had to capture them otherwise you wouldn't have them available anymore so these are now equal and now we go to our uh, index of c and pass these values the original values of i into it and effectively swapping the values so if i go there now uh, oh there are some errors let me see what's going on oh because this is not a capital of course supposed to be lowercase okay the form loaded if i try to sort it it says errors when i loaded sort by name not loaded so if i load them and i'll sort by id you can see the ids are from the lowest to the highest if i sort by name which is this uh, list box you can see that they are in indeed in alphabetical order and you can see that the all the values of id discount cone and rate all, all four uh, boxes remain parallel the values uh, like let's say smith has a id of 1010 and discount code s and the rate is 0 0.1 so when i sort it by name smith is becomes last because it's the last in alphabetical order but the, it has the same id it has the same discount code and the same rate because all of them were switched together all right so uh, that's how you sort them and that's how we display them and in our last uh, part in the next part we will do the search by name which shouldn't be too bad that should be actually fairly simple so uh stick around and i'll see you in the next part take care